So, all right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 15 of First Round. I always say that is a really awkward part when I have to talk to the camera for a second. My guest this week is Julia Chabala. Did I say that right? Chabala. Chabala. Like the bread? Not Chabada, Chabala. Chabada, Chabala. Yeah, yeah. close All right. though. All right, I was I, close. I also got Chewbacca in high school, so it was... Oh, naturally. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if you were like 30 years older, you would have got it It'll constantly. probably still happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are we drinking this week? So, my choice was Trogues. Um, okay. Scratch beer series, so... So far, so good. I'm not complaining. And weirdly enough, I bought like a sampler pack of Trogues a couple weeks ago, and this bottle did not have a label on it at all. Um, so like obviously it's one of the three <laughs> or four beers in there, but I'm excited to find out what it is. So how so far? Uh, well, I haven't had a sip, so let me let me give it a shot. <laughs> too much too much risk for me. I would not be able to handle the pressure. I'm pretty sure it's that. Is it really? Yeah, because I had one of those last week, and it tastes pretty similar. It's either that or one of the the hop scratch or whatever that one is. So. Yeah, well, good choice either way. All right, well, I wanted to have Julia on. Julia and I met probably six, seven months ago, was it? Yeah, about. Um, Julia met, and I met because she volunteers and I work with an organization called the Miracle League of the South Hills. And what the Miracle League, why don't you actually explain what the Miracle League okay. is? Okay, so um, Miracle League is a very um, unique organization, but also is national too. Um, is it international? I think it might be. Uh, I think at this point, I'm sure it's in Canada. Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure where sure. else it is. But. Um, it's huge, to say the least. But um, Pittsburgh specifically, it has organizations all over, chapters almost, mm -hmm. um, in the north, and then where I am in the South Hills. Um, they have a Western PA, all over. So basically, it pairs volunteers called buddies with um, coaches, who's, who is what I do. Um, with players who range from my youngest is four and my oldest was 17 in the spring. So wide variety of ages with children with all different learning disabilities or physical disabilities. So it really gives the children and kids and teens an opportunity to um, step on the field and experience baseball um, from a non-judgmental, sometimes we don't keep score, um, There's a scoreboard, but a lot of, let's <laughs> put this way, a lot of games end up in ties. So a lot of games so end up in ties. So it's, it's a cool thing for an hour a week for the kids to come and just hang out and just experience baseball. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. I got involved with the organization about six and a half, seven years ago. Um, Sean Casey, uh, who's a former Major League Baseball player. Great guy. Yeah, great guy from Upper St. Clair, which is where the field is. Um, retired probably eight or nine years ago and decided that he wanted to build a Miracle League field for kids with special needs. Um, he basically came to an ad agency marketing firm that I used to work for um, and we helped him with pro bono with building a website and planning some initial events and the initial strategy to help them really raise that money. Um, and then after that project sort of ended, I stayed on and volunteered for years and years and years with the organization and been really with them pretty much since, since day one. Um, and it's a really, really amazing thing to be a part of because I played baseball in the South Hills growing up. It was such a cool thing. Um, and now you get to see, there's, I think there's 300 kids that play at our field. Yeah. These kids wouldn't have, I mean, some of them would have been able to play very low level minor, right. not minor league, um, little league baseball or t ball or whatever right. on a on a normal field, but the vast majority of them really wouldn't have gotten that oh, opportunity. No. Mm -hmm. um, there's kids that have um, real, full, I don't know how to describe them, but like the full motorized wheelchairs to walkers to all kinds of de developmental disabilities, and the fact that there's a place where these kids can go is just unbelievable and. I mean, they've got the jerseys. They've got they got better jerseys. I played college baseball. They have just as nice jerseys. Oh my gosh, as well. yeah. they have <laughs> I saw them helmets. Doing. Yeah, their own helmets. You know, Base hats. Helmets, everything. Yeah. They take it very seriously. Yeah, they take <laughs> some of them take it extremely seriously. So um, it's a really really cool thing. The reason um, that I wanted to have Julia on this week is I've talked to a lot of people over the last couple months about like different volunteering things, and myself, I've made excuses of being too busy. I wanted to talk to you about how you choose because that's not the only thing you do a lot of volunteer work correct yeah i don't so, like to sit still <laughs> that's okay so explain to me explain to me some of the other volunteer stuff you do yeah, and sure. like how you fit that into your actual yeah. schedule of being an adult and working and yeah. going out and being a normal human being yeah um so at first it was hard um i kind of as the cliche saying the whole time management thing mm -hmm. um 
but honestly, it was just kind of figuring out what I enjoyed doing and what, mm -hmm. um, all, like, on my own, like, hobbies and personal life, all that kind of stuff, um, and pairing it with something that does fit for my schedule. So for me, I always wanted to be a teacher growing up, but I never went to be in, in as a as an educator. Um, okay. So I loved working with kids. So because of that, I played softball growing up. So I was like, what can I do to pair it? So long story short, I found Miracle League. Um, and it fit well with my schedule because A, it was like six weeks every couple months, and mm -hmm. it was for 45 minutes maybe, but it feels like so much longer when you're out there. Yeah, the games are, the games are what? They give them two at bats? Yeah, we so do two. So like two full innings yeah. and everybody bats each Right, yeah. yeah. And sometimes it'll be 20 minutes, sometimes it'll be an hour, but either way, it feels way longer yeah. than that. Um, so I do that, and then also um, I love to paint, and I'm very creative. Um, so over the summer, I also volunteer at the library, my local library, and I started every once in a while. I hold kind of like painting with a twist, but for kids. Oh, that's awesome! So I do. So a little less boxes. wine. And we do juice boxes. Juice boxes. <laughs> All right, that's was... a good question. So we, yeah. yeah, we just we we hang out on a more you know friendly level. Um, not not trying to get too crazy, but. Um, so I paint and then they follow along and um, so that was over the summer. Um, I do that and I also help with the American Girl Doll Book Club at my library too. So that's once a month. So is that the old school like that is American? The, that is the like, old school. They, was Samantha still one around. Of them? Samantha, I can tell you all about them. These girls are passionate. <laughs> so I, I, this is unrelated. We didn't talk about we. Usually I talk a little bit about like what we're going to ask for the first question, but this one is not all related. But just like two weeks ago, I ran into like a, an old neighbor who's like a grandmother. And apparently I remember like when I think my sister had an American Girl doll. Oh yeah, I had two of them. Okay. She had one, but now there's like a ridiculous amount of stuff for them. Um, you can get their nails painted. You can okay. get their hair done. You can buy, um, which I will admit, I had a matching outfit with mine. I had the dog. The you dog. did not have a matching the, outfit. Oh, we had we had dresses. We had matching pajamas. We were we went all somewhere. Out. I will, <laughs> I'll I'll email Julia's mom and link to those photos. But that's that's. Oh, that's I had pretty... the dog had its own little outfits. I had oh, it. I was very all into it. So kind of tying that back in. That's what I found that I you know I liked it as a kid, and when I saw my library had that, you know, I do that for two hours once a month. So what it what happens is the American so, Gir American Girl doll book, book club. club. Yeah, so they'll read their book. I don't read it. I probably should to like keep up. But they read it. They bring their doll. We all hang out. We do a craft. We have a snack, and they just like go home. And I see them the next month. <laughs> yeah. So it's like two hours. It's it's fun. I like to see the girls. They're finally remembering my name after like a year of doing it. So little little win-win there last month so i think you should read the books I, or are they the exact same books from when we were younger well um i didn't read them when i was younger either okay I just you just matching, had the doll i just oh, cool. matching, or bought matching clothes i thought that was like half the thing was like you got the the parents bought the doll so yeah. that you do the reading so that you no, got no I mean, I you mean, got off easy yeah you got off easy <laughs> my parents were lenient yeah um, but yeah, so it's just kind of learning um, amongst all these different things, just learning, um, you know, what works with my schedule and, you know, um, and now that Miracle League is over for mm -hmm. the season, I'm so bored. Um, so I'm kind of looking again at different avenues and outlets of, you know, where I can fit, fit something in. Yeah, it's, I, I know personally, like one of the ones that I've always been attracted to and I haven't, this is why I wanted to have Julie on because last week a buddy was telling me that I need to do this is big brothers and big sisters and it's like one of those programs where yeah it's it seems daunting like oh I have to be a big brother that sounds like a big responsibility but he's explaining it to me it's like two hours a month or like I'm yeah. sorry like two afternoons a month for yeah. like six total hours and I think about like how how many Saturdays when it's rainy or cold that I've wasted? You know, when it's nice outside, I get out and do something. But when it's right. rainy or cold that I've wasted binge watching Netflix or right. just sitting around on the computer or right. doing nothing around the house, where I could have just gone and like taken a kid to the museum or taken a kid to the zoo or done mm -hmm. like whatever, and that would have made such a difference for that kid and for me. So, right. The point is, we're all being a little lazy and and sitting around doing everything and. If you want to, there's time to give back. Even yeah. when you're doing something like starting a business, I'm certainly a lot busier this year than I have been in the past, but I think there's still time for that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it kind of, 
um, you know, on, on the days where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. I don't know if I'll have time to volunteer tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever, whatever's going on. Um, I heard a really cool quote um, by Muhammad Ali actually when, during his passing that kind mm -hmm. of really resonated with me. Um, and not a for exact word for word, but um, it went along the lines of like giving back and, and, and community service is kind of our way of paying rent being on earth. Oh, so like it was kind of that really that really just kind of like hit home for me because you know that's why I do Miracle League and all these things yeah. because it's my chance to get back to these kids who have way harder day and day in and day out response like not even responsibilities but just lives you know mm -hmm. compared to what I have to do so did you see that one of our one of the kids from the Miracle League of the South Hills was homecoming thing at Mount Lebanon yeah. I did. I th I think that's a really great thing, and it's it, it, it's by no means just at Mount Lebanon. It's been at a lot of other schools this yeah. year. And I don't know if it just sort of started in this year or in the last couple of years, but I think to myself, like that's a really cool thing because right. one of the, I'm working with another nonprofit organization right now named Best Buddies, and they kind of basically that's do what the, best the in yeah <laughs> kind of so you know exactly yep. what it is. But for everybody watching, um, you know they have adults with developmental disabilities are often kind of forgot about because there are programs like the Miracle League for younger people. Even though we do have some adults in, in the Miracle League, there are, there's several teams of full adults, people all the way up into their 50s and 60s mm -hmm. that play at the Miracle League. Um, but there's less stuff and those people don't go to a school or right. you know they're not being educated so they're isolated a lot more and Best Buddies kind of you know pairs up you know younger people with older adults with developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And gives them the opportunity to, you know, get out and socialize and, you know, have a big brother sister type of relationship, right. you know, on a regular basis. Um, but what, what's interesting to me and what I think is so great about the, these kids that have been named Homecoming King and Homecoming Queen is, you know, this is a chance for them to have a whole lot of people that are socially around them. Right. They may not experience that the rest of their life if they're in a if they're if they have a severe enough developmental disability. They may not be able to work, or right. they may not be able to have the same socialization as a lot of other people. Right. So I think it's really great that they kind of have given some of these kids this, their moment in this. Summer. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. And kind of to go off that too, um, another big reason I do it is because I see how the parents just kind of have a breath of fresh air whenever mm -hmm. I kind of take the kids off their hands for an hour yeah. and they can just hang out and just not have to worry about anything yep. and whenever I hand off you know any of my kids to a buddy or, to, or if I if, if I take them on for the like, for the afternoon the parents I, you can just tell are just like okay I have a minute to breathe yeah so that's like another really big reason why it's just it's an awesome organization and they get to see their kids so many times I think those kids are told that they can't do something mm -hmm. and they get to see their kid do something oh, and succeed and hit a home run and it's yeah it, you know it, it's a it's a great experience to see this one of my a buddy of mine's sons both uh, were diagnosed with uh, a disease that pretty much immobilized both of them um, and they're in full motorized um, wheelchairs and everything and I played baseball with him and I remember these little boys before they got sick they had so much energy and they're running around and playing ball and they you know the one the one was a little bit younger but the one would you know hit the ball all the time his dad would pitch it to him right. And now at least, you know, they, he and his brother, you can see them on the field playing. Right. He, he, they can't do a whole lot, but they're at least out there and they're right. experiencing something that, you know, as opposed to just sitting at home, which they spend a lot of time doing anyway. Right, right. So I think it's a, it's a really great thing. So that's my plug for the Miracle League. <laughs> if there's your, if you're looking for, what, 45 minutes to an hour Not a week? For six, for six Saturdays, sometimes a night game. Yeah. And the, the value of it and what you'll get out of it is absolutely amazing. Plus, the yeah. field is really cool. There's a fake PN. There's a fake like skyline of Pittsburgh mm -hmm. in the in the playground outside of it. It's really really neat. So yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. So when you're not volunteering, what do you do? Oh. Sleep. <laughs> uh, sleep is a very <laughs> very big thing for me. Um, so besides that, um, work downtown. Mm -hmm. Work for Chemistry slash UPMC Health Plan. Um, digital marketing. Okay. Um, so I'm doing that full time. Volunteering is a lot big thing. Um, I'm just trying to stay active as much as possible. So and what time management is the biggest thing? So what does digital marketing mean? Because that sure. can mean a million different things. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a multitude of things. Um, so it's kind of like the umbrella term for everything. I kind of like to say that's not print. Um, print okay. marketing. Um, related marketing, I should say, advertising. So specifically what I do is I handle 
websites for various companies that UPMC Hoffman owns. Okay. Um, I manage content mostly, projects, a few social media things here and there, um, just a whole plethora of stuff. Um, but it keeps me busy, keeps me constantly going, um, but nonetheless I love it. <laughs> um, but digital marketing is, oh man, okay. Social media. Um, <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah, social. There, th that's a whole um, umbrella within itself. Um, what else do I do? I do microsites, landing pages, mm -hmm. um, campaigns for the husband. Um, oh my God, help me! I don't even know what else. What else is? There? Are you in the uh, steel building? I am in the steel building. Okay. Yeah, I'm on twenty fifth floor. Um, digital marketing team. My boss is actually the. Um, First episode. So yeah, episode one, Chris episode Daly. Episode one, Chris Daly. Um, Chris Daly also apparently is not allowed to have any free time either because he, it must he, be something that he hires for that or I whatever. I don't know how he functions. That, yeah. Him, he's just. For those of you who didn't see episode one, let, let me run down the list. So Chris works at UPMC Health Plan. Mm -hmm. He's in a band. Yes. He is not the head, but he's on the board or co founder of TEDx Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Helps organize it. Yeah, he teaches at, is it Duquesne? Duquesne. Duquesne, I couldn't remember if it's Duquesne or Pitt. Um, there's something else he does, and then he's also having a kid now. He is. Yeah. Yeah, he's nonstop. <laughs> so he's a very cool role model to have, um, and he's and he's just top There's a reason Chris was episode one. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's To shame everybody else after episode <laughs> one. All the yeah, other, all all the other guests there. have to live up to Chris, so. No, Wait till I get to like episode seventy five. It's just gonna be some guy I grabbed from outside. <laughs> yeah, he's a, Chris is a great guy. Um, he's taught me a lot. Um, it's actually weird how I met him too. He was um, so I was president of AMA at Duquesne in my oh, undergrad. Okay. Had him come in and speak for us, and then four months later, he texted me. I don't know how he got my number, but he texted me um, and said, "Hey, I have a job opening," and it just kind of all fell from there. So again, back to the volunteering thing. I didn't sign up to be the president of AMA, but I volunteered to kind of take it over, and seven months later, got me a job. Yeah, I, I always thought like, so I, I do a lot of networking. Like we first met from you wanted to volunteer for some Miracle League stuff, and we met and networked and everything. That's how I've met a lot of young people, and I, I always have said to people like one of the best ways that you can get experience is to volunteer or, you know, just do things. Like, right. You know, if you don't have anything on your resume. Go email the Pittsburgh Marathon and say, "Hey, do you need volunteers?" Right. I, I'll sit in, at a t table and hand out, right. you know, hand out shirts or bags or whatever for yep. three hours. You're not gonna make any money, but you can put on your resume and say, "You know what? I volunteer for the Pittsburgh Marathon." So at least when I'm looking at that resume for this 22 year old who may not have much experience, mm -hmm. I at least know, okay, he's responsible enough to show up. Right. One point right, right. there. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. Like I, back probably about six years ago. I was going through like a little mental like, I don't know if it was six years ago, maybe four years ago, going through like a little mental, like I felt like I was kind of in a funk, like sure. everything was just kind of going fine, not bad or anything, but I'm like, all right, my new year's resolution was like, I wasn't going to say no to anything. Like mm -hmm. that sounds like super aspirational <laughs> and kind of douchebaggy. Like it really wasn't, but like it was for, for my career wise, like if somebody asked me to speak somewhere, mm -hmm. if somebody asked me to network, it was, it was related to my career and I was happy with my job that I was in. I was, you know, I was actually super happy with my job. I just wanted to like get a little bit more inspired. Sure. So I, I was just like, I'm going to say yes to every speaking opportunity. I'm going to if somebody asked me to join a board or do whatever, I'm not going to like, I'm going to say yes to it. I did, and from that, like I joined PRSA Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. A year later, I was still on that yes kick, and I said, "All right, yes, I'll be the president of PRSA Pittsburgh." Mm -hmm. There were days that was awesome, and days where I really regretted my <laughs> New Year's resolution wasn't to say no to everything. But um, no, you kind of have to do that stuff when you're young in your career. Right. You don't have the option to really say no if you want to build and 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 you know, expand your circle and expand the people that you know into something bigger, right. then, you know, that's a lot better. And I mean, for me as somebody who's starting a business, that's been extremely helpful because the people I said yes to three or four years ago to, to come to a class to speak, you know, now that I'm out there networking and trying to meet people and, you know, develop my business, I can talk to them and they're, right. oh yeah, Dan came to my class and spoke two times. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'll take a meeting with him or whatever. Yep. And that doesn't mean that they're going to hand me some business, but at least opens doors right. to, you know, that. Yeah. So. No, totally. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing, too, um, when you, I found when you do network and you volunteer or do whatever it is, like, PR, like everything, whenever you join any organization or do anything, it kind of starts like a domino effect almost, mm -hmm. where for me... You know, I was doing best buddies in college, and then that whole volunteering thing turned into Miracle League, which turned mm -hmm. into the library, which turned into helping Chris with Ted, and then which turned into, so now it's just like, I'm starting with our clubhouse, so it's like, one thing after oh, another, after, yeah, so it's just like, going, 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 to where it's just like this this snowball that just keeps helping and, and going on and on. And it's not like you have to keep doing all of those things. Right. It gives you an opportunity to find out what you really like. Right. So, like, I know that you love working for the, with the Miracle League. Right. But if that turned you on and it turns out you love working with our clubhouse more or you love doing TEDx more, right. I think it's more about just finding something that you really, really enjoy right. and then dumping as much time as you possibly can. Exactly. Like that. So, yeah. yeah. I know that like my sister, she just moved. She's having a baby like maybe any minute right now. She, she's doing like, <laughs> I told my mom, I'm like, Laura's doing, I had my dinner with my parents last night. I'm like, Laura's doing like 20 days, right? And she's, or like three weeks. And she, my mom's like, she's doing like, Oh my god. So she could be having the baby well, right congratulations. now. I didn't, my phone's on uh, silent, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's not like I need to be there or anything, but still, like, I want to see the baby soon. Um, but she volunteers with the Southside Slopes Association, mm -hmm. she, and she doesn't live here anymore. But she still has this passionate kind of vibe to be involved right. in the community that she lived in for like six and a half years. Right. And she lives in Dormont, so she's five minutes away. So it, it's... But it, I don't think that she'll stop just because she moved away a couple of months right. ago. It's, it becomes what you really passionately care about, you know. It's like the same way that, like, I've talked to Chris about volunteering with TEDx and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And for me, that becomes a, okay, yeah, if that works out, that's great. If it's something that I try for a year and I don't really enjoy, I hate to say it, like, I'm busy enough and there are enough great organizations out there. Right. I'll go volunteer with something else. So. Right. Yeah, it just kind of turns into this domino effect where you just have... So many options that you can always tap into whatever you're feeling at that moment being able to do yeah yeah so what do we think of the beer i'm loving it yeah yeah it's all really right good. so hold up scratch beer series yeah this from trogues so you give it a thumbs up i give it two thumbs up two thumbs up if possible uh, mine's the exact same thing i'm pretty sure there's no label on it but i'd really like to know someday if trogues is by any chance i'll tag trogues if by any chance they see <laughs> this i'd love to know what this label this bottle was you know so. <laughs> i think it was scratch beer series but you know if you guys can get back to me let me know that'd be awesome um all right well thank you so much for You're being welcome. on i really appreciate it um i'll link to the miracle league and what else what other i'll listen to, what can i link to the american doll if you can do the bridgeville library <laughs> the bridgeville library i will link to the bridgeville library if you guys are looking to volunteer you know i i I personally do a little bit of volunteering. I think it's wonderful. It's a great way to give back, and it just just makes you feel better at the end of the day. Yeah, it kind of pulls you out of like corporate America and like the, the craziness that work just I don't know gives you and they just gives you a minute to breathe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the way I kind of think. There's of it. nothing that beats a kid with special needs just hitting a ball into the outfield and right. racing around the bases. And like if you're help part of making that happen, you're gonna feel pretty darn good about yeah. yourself. So. That's the selfish part of volunteering. Well, yeah, and even with that, or it's like a girl who's like, hey, do you want to hang out with me and my American Girl doll? And mm -hmm. she's like seven years old. Hey, yeah, I would love to do that with you. Yeah. I <laughs> think that that's not really my fit. I think, yeah, I <laughs> they think have a Lego that, club. If you they have a Lego club. <laughs> all right, maybe the Lego club. That would work out a lot. So you have your all options. All right, well, thank you so much You're for welcome. being on. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with another beer, hopefully with a label, another <laughs> guest, and another episode. So thanks. Bye, guys.